Chapter 5 introduced a color boost action, one that enhanced all colors, made all colors more bright, but created some variation at the same time. Chapter 6 introduced the Modern Man from Mars action, a way of introducing color variation without actually boosting the colors overall. They each have their uses, and I explain them first for ease of learning as separate actions. In real life, however, you would want to do them as soon as you're comfortable, do them as a single action, MMM plus color boost. For some people, it's very easy to make this transition to the more complicated action. For other people, it's like running into a brick wall. So to illustrate how this combined action works, I have brought a picture of a big brick wall to work with. And here we are. Okay, here we start with a brick wall, and the problem, as, as is the case with all pictures dominated by a single color, is we see more color variation. We would see more color variation if we looked at the scene than the camera has picked up. We also tend to see more bright colors than the camera does. So one possibility, and I, uh, this file here is in LAB, so one possibility would be to um, enhance all colors this way, steepening the A and the B curves. Like that. Something of that nature. And that boosts all colors, but it also creates more differences in the bricks. Now it's too much, but of course we could always go back and do something like this, and probably this, is, uh, this does improve the picture. Okay. The other way of doing it, color variation without necessarily overall color change, overall color increase. Well, let's here make, uh, I'm going to make a composite layer of this one. Okay, and turn it off. Now this one I'm going to turn off, add a new, color, new curves layer. And this one I'm going to be shooting for color variation. So I'm going to go to the A channel and find what I think is a typical color like right here and then twist the curve like anything. And I'm going to do the same to the B. Okay, that's color variation without actually making the, the, the whole picture brighter. There's before, there's after. Once again, it's way too much and we cut it down, but if we go to do something like that, we can see that this has made an improvement because it's made the picture more believable. It's given us some of this uh, color variation that make, makes things work for us. Now there is one little issue here, which is you notice that the mortar is turning blue, and that's not believable. Uh, that's, that's an unfortunate side effect of what I just did. Okay, so we would like to find a way to boost colors overall, as I did with the first set of curves, and then also find a way to increase color variation, as I did with the second set of curves. You may have um, noticed that the first set of curves was pretty much just the, uh, the color boost action. The second set is kind of undisciplined. Uh, it would be very difficult for a non-expert to make those curves real quickly, and certainly it would be difficult for most people to handle the fact that the mortar became blue. Um, that's all taken care of by action, though. Um, let me show how the combined action works. So instead of doing it by hand and twiddling around with these opacities in some sort of interactive way like this to see how, how well they work and play together. Well, I see that's not too bad. But instead, I'd prefer to run an action that does both of these things at the same time. So I would, um, this, this action requires a selection. And the selection can be made any way you make a selection in Photoshop, including select all. I could do select all here because the whole picture is bricks, so the whole selecting everything would be perfectly valid, or I more usually just take a lasso and circle some area that kind of represents what this picture is all about, like that. Okay, and now I'm going to click the, um, the MMM plus CB action. Um, if you've never seen this action before, you've never really seen anything like it before, because this is the only one that I've ever seen that works in this way, where it evaluates what's inside that selection, then throws the selection away, and then applies 
a new correction to the entire picture. And it works like this. Okay, now we have th three different layers that are affecting things, plus a fourth if we choose to use it. This endpoint adjustment layer is part of the color boost action. Right now it's not doing anything, but you could, if you wanted to, um, add some, uh, some changes to, to uh, contrast in that. But for the time being, let's work with these three. The first two are man for Mars. First is a luminosity move. It's guessing as to, as to what might add contrast to the bricks. And this, remember, this is a computer working by algorithm based on this selection, so it isn't always right. But let's see whether we like what it's doing here. I certainly like it. It's, um, it, may, it might be a little bit too much, but you can see how it's adding a lot of um, definition to the bricks. I might turn it down a little bit just for the sport of it. Now, the, the, the two color boosting layers, the MMM color and the color boost, are behaving in different ways. The color boost layer is doing just what it says. It's making all the colors brighter. The MMM color layer is driving them apart. So that we're seeing some bricks are more neutral, others are, have become more red. Keeping straight what these things do um, sometimes is a little bit difficult. This is one reason why we have them at low opacities. Uh, because I'd like to know what's going on here. So I'm going to swing that out here. Just to give me an idea of what is changing when this layer is invoked. And you notice that uh, a funny thing is happening. The mortar, which used to get blue the way than when I did it by hand, we've got a way to protect it in the action. We, we protect neutral colors so that they won't change very much. So the question is, how far do we want to go from between this and this? And then how much do we want to augment it with a color boost? And here I might, it's looking to me like the lighter bricks are better than the darker ones, so I'm going to put a, color, a layer mask here to try and restrict the amount of color that's going into the darker bricks. So here's apply image, the L channel, and like that. That seems to improve things. Okay, so now, now we've got a realistic brick wall, sort of. There's before, there's after. If you think it's too much, lower the overall opacity like that. Then you have that, before, after. Okay, so that is an interesting way of combining the two, the two facets of color plus a third luminosity move um, to make one sort of unified whole. It does require that you adjust the, the sliders um, individually based on what they're doing to one another. Okay, this is kind of a stupid example because I don't think you'd ever work on a brick wall. But I've got something that looks a lot like a brick wall that money is involved in retouching. And that is this. This is a professional photograph. It is an advertising photograph to advertise for the manufacturer of this floor. Okay, that's somewhat of a brick color here, and it is extremely boring the way that it came out. Um, not surprising because it seems that this, this weathered floor is um, yeah, it's very subtle colors. But nevertheless, if we were looking at that floor, we'd see a little bit more color variation than what we've got there. And uh, presumably, the advertiser would like to see some of that too, and might just want to see brighter colors as well. Um, in other words, we're going to have to do a certain amount of lying with this picture, on, uh, in a good cause, of course. How far we can go depends on how far the advertiser lets us go. So we again make a selection of the important parts. We ignore the fireplace. We ignore the walls. We're advertising the floor. So something like that is a perfectly suitable selection. And Again, when I run the action, it's not running through the selection. It's analyzing the selection to see what might be right for the whole picture. Then it throws the selection away and corrects based on what it learned. And there we are. That's very interesting. Okay. Let's go through the same process. The luminosity variation. There's before the action worked on it, and there's what it thinks adds more life to the floor. Is it right? I don't know. It looks like it's somewhat of an improvement. Uh, you, you might want to bring it down, or if you're interested, you might want to bring it all the way up 
to see where it's going. You notice that it protects the shadows. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to plug the fireplace. There's, there, there are ways of avoiding that. So this is the direction that that layer is moving us in. Okay, so we pick something for that. I mean, this is not a final choice, of course. And then let's see what the two color layers are doing. Okay, there's, this is to begin with, and this is the color variation layer. Okay, it goes from uh, sort of off-brown color to this, reds and grays. I don't know whether the client would like that. Certainly, I expect the client would like this. There's before, there's after. I mean, that is more suggestive of a floor that changes color. And then we have this, the, the color boost. How far can we go in making the colors brighter? I don't know the answer. That's probably up to the client again. We, we don't want to make it seem like something that uh, will, will cause the buyer of this floor to be disappointed when, they, when it uh, shows up if they're expecting something really bright. So maybe we want to do something again like this. Then we still have this layer here, which is not accomplishing anything at the moment. And if we wanted to add more definition to the floor, we could do that easily enough by um, adjusting the curves layer, finding where the floor lives, and doing something like that. There's before, there's after. Is it too much? If it is, then you cut back on the opacity. So now you got four different layers doing four different things, all of which are positive in their own right, but the combination of them is going to, what, is going to be the thing that makes this picture an individual success, if it is. Um, so this gives maximum flexibility, in my view, for adjusting the color and making it look good. Okay, now let's just compare it to the original photo. See how flat this is? If you can do something like this, I think you're going to make everybody a whole lot happier. So that's the, the functioning of the MMM plus color boost um, action, to give you the tools to adjust each layer individually and come up with the result that you're after.